It's Friday night where the best of high school football is here on News 12. Under the lights, powered by Sig Cox. Hey friends, thanks for sticking around. This week was the first time many of our high school football teams were able to get back out on the field. Our student athletes routines were just as disrupted as ours. Richmond County home football games ease back into Friday night football by making some adjustments. Julius Evans has the details. The show must go on. That's what Richmond County students are saying tonight as things start looking familiar again under the lights. I just got to normal, what we know. It's like, it brings more happiness because just sitting in the house, bored, no power, it kind of is depressing. It makes you start thinking a lot about, you know, what's going on in the world. <laughs> they're excited. I'm not excited, but they're excited. I guess like being at home with no power every day is just making them want to go back to school, be with their friends. Despite the game starting and ending earlier, you couldn't tell the difference on the field or in the stands. Students say it's good to come back, but the storm has caused a lot of headaches. It's supposed to be our homecoming coming up, and this has really pushed back our schedule a lot. Like, it's caused a lot of, like, different schedule changes. Um, I had a lot planned. I had a ring ceremony, and my SAT got canceled. I had a club trip, so I'm just excited to come back to all that. Even with all the setbacks, parents and students say they're glad they're through the thick of it and are ready to move on. I'm just so happy. I know I went several days without power and elect, electric, I mean power and water. So me and my children, we had to go to Atlanta for a few days. But I'm just so happy that everything is going back to normal. The water is coming back on. It's getting clean. The curfew's lifted. The power is back on. The signal's back. And I mean, we're out here, so everything seems pretty normal right now. Hey, that is a very, very good thing. It is not often you have a game where two counties take a rivalry to a whole new level. Friends become enemies from kickoff to the final quarter. That's true once a year for Washington Wilkes and Lincoln County fans. So much so that families draw battle lines. Joseph Doring takes us to the 378 war. Well, we waited a long time for the return of high school football, and what better place to do it than right here at the 378 War? Lincoln County came into this game with an undefeated record, and after a stellar defensive performance the entire ball game, undefeated is also how they're going home. The Red Devils came into tonight carrying a 5-0 record, but just a one-game lead over Washington Wilkes in a rivalry that dates back to 1922. Lincoln County's offense was scoring, but the defense was giving them every opportunity in the first half. The Red Devils recovered three Tigers fumbles in just the first 13 minutes of the game, and Washington Wilkes was staring at a scoreboard with nothing to show but a 27-0 halftime deficit. Coach Doug Huff does an incredible job with our defense and our defensive staff. They do a great job with our kids, and they've got them playing very hard. We're not real big, but we're athletic and quick, and they've got those kids playing hard. Very proud of them. Rivalry games always run deep with passion and emotion, and we saw plenty of that tonight. Laundry was a common sight all game, and if you even thought about going to grab popcorn after a routine tackle on first down, you probably missed some chirping going on between players. I thought there were some times we could have done a little bit better job there, and that falls on me. I've got to get them to make sure they understand that, you know, there's a way to behave and a way to way to handle yourself. But all in all, I'm very proud of them and I'm very excited to be a Red Devil. Long break, no problem. The Red Devils keep their undefeated season alive and improve to 6-0 as they take down the Tigers 34-0. Lincoln County will head to Lake Oconee next Friday and Washington Wilkes will head back home to play Greene County. Reporting from Larry Campbell Stadium, Joseph Doring on your side. All right, thank you, Joe. Let's go to one of those 5 p.m. games, Westside and Cross Creek. There is Mr. Patriot and Lee Hutto at dusk. I showed up for a football game. Instead, it was a battle of the bands where a football game was just the opening act. Westside entered the end zone three times in the final two minutes of the first half. That brought it to 41 to 6 with two more quarters of play left. Start the dishwasher. Westside continues to clean house in 3A. They're now 6 0 for the eighth time in program history. Here's that other 5 p.m.er. Lady and Butler both have matching three and two records. Not after this, though. They went the distance in the first quarter. 99 problems, but three ain't one. He takes it all the way to the end zone. His friends couldn't even catch up to him for a little bit of a celebration action. Lady from the 30 takes it equal distance to the end zone. Hey, Carl Holmes 
phone home and tell him you got six. Lady gets a two point conversion right after that and sets up eight to six, but Butler's got heat with four to go in the first quarter. That's a more dangerous do than chicken critters in ribs. Laney narrowly escapes this one though. This cross county rivalry just turned into a weighty region battle. Undefeated Harlem up against the Irish fighting for their third win of the season. And they were both fighting for inches on offense. Welcome to the Arroyo Wrangle. Okay, warning, object may be closer than it appears. That's more for me than for you. That's a regular occurrence for Jack Rhodes, though. Irish strike first. They went from punting out of their own end zone to finding Harlem's Christian Cates. He learns how to skate. We love a redemption arc. Aquinas getting the win there. Josie on over in the good old BC, like you know me. Out of Burke County's five previous games, four out of the five were won by about 30 points. If you thought Coach Franklin had other plans against Josie, here's your chance to change that. Boom, there it is. That is 56 to 12 down at the Parkway. Burke County claims another win. They moved to five and one and one and zero oh on the region. Okay, Thomas Jefferson still looking to get into the win column. They got the defending state champions on the docket. Edmund Burke is number one in single A. Here's why. Y'all ever seen the replacements? Danny, I need the ball. I need to get me the ball. He's not Danny, but he is Billy the Kid. It's like Edmund Burke just needed one more touchdown to seal the deal, though. Edmund Burke gets their first region win of this season. Okay, here comes the Trojans welcoming Crosstown Willis and Elko. It was a slow-moving first half. They either both of them did not score. Carlos Drayton, though, runs to Dayton, only to get stopped by in his tracks for by Bush or Jarvis Bush there. Okay, encore, please. That's a perfect example right here of the first half. Willis and Elko would score in the last 10 seconds of the third quarter, and Red Spring Mineta would make three trips to the red zone before they'd even get on the board. Trojans slip past the Blue Devils 8-7. to seven. That's four straight for them. Westside football makes it 6-0. Lincoln County continues to play catch up on that 2015 season with their win there. Emmanuel County Institute picked up their fourth win of the season. Scrubbing County ends a two-game. Uh, they don't actually end a two-game skid. They actually got beat by Metter there, and they fall to 2-4. and four. Battle of the Westminsters. And before we go and move on to our South Carolina schools, Lakeside continues to make history. They are now 6-0 on this season. Okay, Midland Valley, Fox Creek, and Silver Bluff all fall this week. Batesburg, Leesville moves to 6-0. And Strom Thurmond, they blank American Leadership Academy. Blackville Hilda makes it five straight for them. Okay, that is all for our football coverage tonight. We are going to go ahead and send everything over to Mikkel and Richard Rodgers. They got the latest for you guys.